Hi, this is Angie Monco, and welcome to August. This is your Becoming a Worthy Self-Advocate newsletter for the month of August. And I just got done teaching a two-day whole soul intensive at my home the last two days, and it was it was wonderful. I, I really enjoyed the people, as I always do, and and I was just, it was such an honor to watch people grow and have some breakthroughs and it was amazing. So I got to thinking, well, what do I want to talk about, you know, for this newsletter? And my message is always one about being a worthy self-advocate, not not worrying about being perfect. And so I don't rehearse these these newsletter videos. Uh, I just really pretty much do them on the fly. I have an idea of what I want to talk about, a topic, but that's about it. And so I just I want to come and speak from the heart and be who I really am, my authentic self. So the topic that came to me to talk about today is worry got you down. And I don't know about you, but certainly when life gets challenging and we don't know where to turn and it feels really, really heavy and difficult, like the weight of the world's on our shoulders. When it feels like that, we, we just tend to want to crawl up in a ball and, and retreat, or we want to get busy trying to control everything around us, don't we? And certainly both of those approaches can drain you of energy, drain me of energy. And that's, that certainly happens. And so if, if I look at the course of my business, I'm in my ninth year of business, and what I've learned, I've, I've learned a lot, um, and primarily about myself. I, I remember when I first started, I was in a group called Overeaters Anonymous, and <clears throat> the 12-step program, and, and I remember I joined it in 2002, and one of the basic tenets of the program is step one. It's a 12-step program. Step one is I am powerless over whatever, fill in the blank, and my life has become unmanageable. And as I, as I learned over time in my coaching business to be more and more empowered, uh, what happened was I became more and more, I think, looking back now, at the time I wouldn't describe it this way, but more and more arrogant, more and more prideful in this way. I thought, well, I'm not powerless. I believe that we can change our thinking and change our life for the better. We can empower ourselves. I, I truly, that's how I was thinking. I'm nothing wrong with that. And what I've learned, <laughs> I left there, the 12-step program, let's see, what year was it? 2012? So it's been like four years ago. And I'm actually thinking about going back. Just because what I've learned is there's so much wisdom there. Um, and how does this relate to worry got you down? Well, what I'm trying to propose here is that we stop worrying and we stop paying so much attention to our mind. And that may sound weird coming from the mindset maven, right? Um, I, you know, when I look at my business, I've always been one to promote practices of the mind. You know, hypnosis, the healing codes, emotional freedom technique, and these are wonderful techniques to change our mind. Okay? So, what if that doesn't seem to have effect? Because it doesn't work all the time, 100% of the time. I wish I could say it did, but it doesn't. And so, why do certain changes not seem to stick? You know? Why do they sometimes appear to stick? And so I got to become an explorer of the truth. That's, that's my mission. I really wanted to be free. Uh, one of my highest values. And I think that you can relate to, I mean, don't you want to be free? And I thought, well, what is freedom? You know, is it having plenty of it in our bank account? For some, yes, that is freedom. But is it looking like a picture perfect model and having a certain size body? For some. That's not how I define freedom. How I define freedom is being able to flow with life, to be a worthy self-advocate, and being able to flow with life, and whenever things happen that are 
that are external, number one, external to me, and number two, internal to me, that when things happen that are apparently beyond my control, that I can know that I'm okay, know that I'm safe and supported, and in other words, not worry when things go wrong. And that's where I've been led with my path, and that's where I'm at now. I can't say that I always feel free 100% of the time, but I've had to surrender some things over the last couple of years. And whenever we think that we have a very strong mind, when we think we're very centered and strong in, in our mind, like we're clear-minded, right? We tend to want to trust that mind a lot. And that, that happens to be my story. I, I think I've had a good mind. You know, I always did well in school and college and passed the CPA exam on the first time. And, and I mean, I've trusted my mind pretty much. Like, I thought I was pretty smart in some ways, okay, intellectually. And, and also, no, not always, but over time, that's what developed. And... <clears throat> And I also thought I was sort of emotionally stable. Looking at my mind, smart. Looking at my emotions, pretty stable. At least, you know, since I've been in this business, felt like I was growing, expanding, and doing all these things right. Doing all these things right. Well, what I've learned is that I needed to be brought down, at least in my story and what was happening, a notch or two. And to realize that no matter how good I think I am, smart that I think I am, or emotionally intelligent that I think I am, I'm not really in charge of a whole lot. Okay? I am powerless. I am powerless over life. And that was a hard thing to learn, you know? That was really hard. But that's what I've learned in this last year. And now I'm I'm done pretending. It's like, you know what? This is who I am. I kind of like who I am. I think I'm kind of cool. Um, but I also know that I'm not in charge of anything. So let's come back to the worry and the, the mind and how that's all tied together. Okay? Um, let me give you a, an example. Let's say you're walking down the sidewalk. You're walking your dog. And down the sidewalk passes you another person walking their dog. And they're wearing a bright red shirt. And you don't really think anything about it. You just pass on by. But shortly after that, and you're almost approaching your, your home after your walk, you, you get this weird feeling, you know, almost of um, like humiliation. You just feel off energetically. And so you walk in your house, and your teenage son, I'm just totally making this up, but your teenage son is coming home. He walks in the door from high school, you know, he had it around 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. And, and you see him, and you say, let's say his name is Tom. Uh, Tom, how was your school day? And But you say it kind of accusatorily, and he's like, it was okay. Well, you know what? You need to go in your room and clean your, your closet. You need to clean your... There, it looks like a, a tornado hit in there. It looks terrible. And so you get off on him and you just start... You just really go off on him. And you're like, why in the world did I do that? And but unbeknownst to you, you apologize to him and so forth. But unbeknownst to you, what happened was that red shirt was a trigger for you. It triggered you back when you were in sixth grade and your English teacher uh, was wearing a bright red shirt and they humiliated you. You couldn't solve some sort of, or you couldn't answer a question, you know, say they had a question about a poem or something, and you couldn't answer it. And he, this, this teacher humiliated you in front of the whole class. And that feeling came right back up. You know, when you saw this person walking down the street in a very similar shirt. <clears throat> so when you look at that scenario, I have a question. Does free will seem very free? Uh, did you have a choice in that matter of how you responded at that point? You were taken right back. 
scientists, from a scientific viewpoint, scientists have shown that, well, they're, they're doing studies, and people don't really want to hear these studies, but that free will is a myth, at least from that perspective. That if our mind is always like jumping from one scenario to another, and we're always being triggered, that it feels like we don't have free will. Now, the reason that I'm talking to you about this is because as a person who has been very respectful of the mind, and I, I'm, I'm not saying that we can't do techniques to help calm our mind or, or manage our mind, because we can. But let's just say 80% or 70% or even 60% of the time those techniques work. What do we do about the other part, you know, the other stuff that slips through the cracks that we can't make our mind positive? What do we do about that? So here's what I'm going to propose. If you want to let go of worry, then create a paradigm shift of how you view your own mind. Create a paradigm shift. How? Well, hmm. That's a good way to say this. Um, if you had someone who was very abusive to you, day in, day out, they were always criticizing you, they were always kind of paranoid about what other people thought. They, some days they would look in the mirror and say, hey, you're awesome. You know, you're awesome. You got this. And then on the next day, they would look in the mirror and say, you know, oh my God, you look so fat. What's going on with you, you know? So they were never consistent with you. They would tell you one thing, but then the next day they would do something different. And just like, they were a slave master to your to your desires. It's like, nah, yeah, you can want that, but I'm not gonna give it to you. You can want it, but you don't deserve that. No, you deserve to be overweight. You deserve to struggle with your money. You deserve to fight with your spouse all the time. Okay. So if you had a friend that did this to you, how often would you hang out with that friend? Would you want that friend around? I wouldn't. But that's exactly what's happening every day in your mind. It's not reliable. So my message to you, if worries got you down, and if you're sick and tired of the same thing happening over and over and over, kind of like what happened to me. It's like I needed to be, remember earlier I said I needed to be taken down a notch or two? Well, I did because I thought I could control things. What I've learned is that it's all an illusion of control. So what can we do about this? Here's my approach. If you like what I'm saying, read the book The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And he'll talk a little bit about this. Um, Robert Scheinfeld is another great uh, author that will talk about this stuff. Um, his most recent book is about being happy no matter what, or I, I can't think of the title right now, but anyway. Here's how I would approach this. I would look at my mind, look at my thoughts, and if they were not serving me, like if they were negative, I would acknowledge them, of course, but then I would say, not true. This isn't true. I'm not gonna listen to that. I'm not gonna listen to that slave driver uh, neurotic person that's telling me that I'm not good, that I'm not worthy enough. I'm not going to listen. So the paradigm shift is I'm going to assume everything pretty much that my mind tells me that doesn't serve me in some positive manner is full of shit. That's what I'm going to do. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to sit in the background and observe, observe what's going on in my not only in my physical world around me, just observe it, but narrate what's going on so that I am not so brought down into it, but I'm just observing it. I'm narrating it. Oh yeah, there's Angie worrying again about whatever. It's not real. It's just an illusion. And she's trying to think she's in control of everything and she's really not. You see, I knew about this idea 
especially when I was in the 12-step program. But have I always followed it? Heck no. I got too big for my britches, left the 12-step program, and then that's when I got back more into trying to control things. It's funny, when I thought I was powerful, I tried to control more. But when I feel I'm powerless, I, I let go, I surrender. So I want you to think about this and how it applies to your life. And I would love for you to comment. I'm going to put this out, something similar to this effect, um, on a blog. And I'd love for your comments. Where are you at with this? So, <clears throat> if you want to slow down, if you, if you really want to get out of this rat race, because the mind is a rat race. I'm not saying we can abandon our mind. We have it, right? Just like we have a body. But if you would like to slow down and go on a little retreat, I want you to consider this retreat coming up in October that me and three other wonderful women are going to be co-hosting. They're going to co-host with me. Check it out. The website is stlretreats.com. STL for St. Louis, stlretreats.com. And Jennifer Tamborski is our event planner, so that's her site. And I, I would love to invite you to just come out and slow down. You know, we so much want to avoid pain, and that's why we don't slow down. We don't want to slow down our thoughts. But you know what? This is time just for you to go create a community with other like-minded women. It's a women's retreat. And to be out in nature, to really connect with yourself, this is a tremendous gift. I really believe that. It's a tremendous gift. So it's going to be in October, October 7th through the 9th. Check it out. The details are all out there. And, you know, I'd like to help support you on this path to freedom, to really being yourself, taking the mask off, and being real. It just takes less energy to do that. And so I want to invite you on that journey with me. I'd love to support you in that. So I'm going to sign off for now. And until next time, God bless. Got to turn this off. <laughs>